pray. Father, as we look into your word, speak to every heart, we ask you. We trust you for the Holy Spirit to grant us utterance in such a way that the word of God will come and transform lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing this. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just reflecting on what we said, boundaries, I was just reflecting on what this, um, about how they say singles and all of those things. Boundaries are very important. Um, my teacher used to, my mom, I'm never sure what to, my mom or my teacher used to tell me this. What you will not take as a rich man, you will not take it as a poor man. Boundaries are what? Very important. And I'm saying so because, the reason I'm saying so is this. When you fail to set boundaries, people take advantage of you. Boundaries are very important. When you fail to set boundaries, people take advantage of you. You know, just imagine that, you know, you and your, you and your wife, you go out together to a party, and all of a sudden, your wife sees you flirting with somebody else. Never say no wife, even girlfriend. Flirting with somebody else. Collecting number. And she sits on the table. The thing about boundaries is that once you don't have a boundary, you allow people to, to abuse you. If someone, if you go out with someone and the person gets someone else's number, ah, there's what you call fight money. Ladies, do you know that fight money? You have it in your wallet. It's vex money. Thank you, vex money. That's what you call vex money. When something happens, you carry yourself and you go. Saying that you have more respect than that. And the same way it happens to ladies, it happens to guys. There was something that someone was telling me recently, recently that there was a concert and one, what do they call it? One, I don't even know the names, you know. But what happened in, in the story was that, you know, someone took his girlfriend for concert and the, the artist pulled down on the stage and they began to dance dramatically and someone said that, ah, you know that it was she was carried away. I said that no, it's a boundary issue. The signs would have been there that there are no boundaries. You know, in fact, the, the fact that the guy waited to explain is kind. You just meet me at home. Because boundary is this, boundary is this. I will take responsibility for my life and you take responsibility for what? For your life. I cannot determine how you behave. That's boundary. Glory to God. But when I talk about boundary today, just something about along the way. You know, and it's important to take boundary. If you, if you don't take boundary, people will just abuse you. I'm telling you. People will just treat you anyhow in the relationship. They'll just, you know, people like some of you now, the way someone see, someone will just be talking about your wife as if they have no sense. And the reason why someone talks about your wife that way is because you have not put a boundary there. If you put a boundary, they understand don't trespass. If you get trespassed, dogs will bite you. Some of you married people, you will take your husband matter and be telling another woman. Or you will take your wife matter. In fact, the worst one is this. Some of you married people, you will take your, you, you will, some of the married men, you will take your wife issue and be telling another woman. So what do you think will come out of that conversation? What kind of intelligence is in your head that thinks that the solution to your problem is to take your relationship matter and be telling another person that is willing that they will be in a relationship with you? You will not be discussing your presence with your ex. You will not turn into present continuous. <laughs> Glory to God. Numbers chapter 2. Numbers 21 verse 8. eight rather. Numbers 21 verse 8. Numbers 21 verse 8. So we understand this. So we've come to the point, you know, in the word of God, that we're talking about goals and the power of goals the power of goals let, let me start from let me start from somewhere else let me start from somewhere else luke chapter 12 verse 16 luke chapter 12 verse 16 the power of goals 
the power of goals. The power of goals. So why do people get stuck in life? And they, listen to this. The reason why people get stuck in life is because they've reached the zenith of their goals and they're not aspiring for new things. So look at Luke 21 verse 16. The Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Verse 17. The Bible says, And he thought within himself, What shall I do? For I have no more room where to bestow my fruits. So the reason why people get stuck is this. Number one, they grow in success and there's no more room. And listen to me, everyone. If you're not careful when you grow, you will begin to slow down in growth if you don't create more room for expansion. So let me tell you practical terms what that means. You run this one shop business and you're getting a lot of customers and things are doing so well. If you don't plan to expand it, you will begin to limit exactly where you are. So some of you, the reason why your business has not grown, and please pay attention, is not because something is wrong. You've just reached the capacity of that business. So there's the volume of that business in that one room, in that shop, in that mall, can only do 100 million. So what can you do? For you to grow, you have to expand. So the Bible says this, and he thought to himself, saying, what shall I do? Behold, I have no more room wherein to bestow my fruit. What he was saying is this, there's no more space for me to expand into. Verse 18. Uh, verse 18. See what it says. It said, this is what I will do, which is the principle of growth. It said, I will pull down my bands and build greater band, and there I will build, I will bestow all my fruit and my growth. What he was saying is that for me to grow, I have to create more rooms for growth. So what goals does for us is that goals allow us to create more rooms for growth. The question is this, are you creating more rooms for growth in your life? And that's why I said something very powerful in the other service. I said, when people said to, when God wants to do something eh, to challenge you, he will raise someone that is behind. The person will just pass you. Pew! Then it will occur to you that you have settled. I don't even know that what I'm talking about. You'll be celebrating the fact that ah, see what I've achieved, see what I've achieved, and you just sit with there. Then God will raise someone from the back, from the back that was very behind you, and the person will overtake you. God will use that person to provoke you to action. And the reason I'm saying so is that some of you are here. When that thing happened to you, you become envious. It's not as if God has forgotten you. You are the one that settled and God wanted to provoke you to action. And God will use new people to set new frontiers. Very powerful. So how do you grow? How do you grow? The way you grow is by setting bigger goals. Bigger goals than where you are. So the first thing is this. Goals goals grow us so without goals there can be growth and without goals there can be fulfillment so the question is that do you have goals that grow you ladies and gentlemen if you are the richest amongst your friend you will have a financial problem later on the reason why is this you will be the one that provides all the intelligence and yet nobody will provide intelligence to you at your own level The reason why you must have goals and the different goals. and when I say goals, I'm not talking just financial goals. One well, of the reasons why you must have spiritual goals. One well, of the reasons you must have goals like, okay, I want to be able to do this, I want to be able to do this, I want to, be able to do this. One well, of the reasons why you must have goals is that number one, without goals, there can be growth. Without goals, there can be what growth because growth is what challenges for the next level. Goal goals is what challenge for the next level so the question is that what are the goals you have that is challenging you to grow do you have goals in your finance that is challenging you to grow do you have goals in your business that is challenging you to grow do you have spiritual goals that is challenging you to go do you have goals in your health that is challenging you to go without goals there can be no growth and without growth there can be no fulfillment oh wow that's so good that's so good that's a good time to clap that's a good time to clap Without goals, there can be no growth. Without growth, there can be no fulfillment. So the question is, that what goals do you have that is challenging to grow?
Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. What goals do you have? What spiritual goals do you have? I mean, look at all the things I listed out today. These are goals. What goals do you have that's challenging to grow? So if God wants you to grow, God begins to put big goals in your heart. God begins to put big goals in your heart. What goals do you have that's challenging you to grow? I'm grateful for what happened yesterday. I'm grateful for my generosity last year. But the thing is that this is a new year. What new goals do I have that is challenging me, that is motivating me, that is inspiring me to grow? Personal story. I don't know who was here, maybe in the choir. There was a time the this fourth service used to be like three rows. Who remembers that time? Oh, you guys remember? Then I came one day and I said, this fourth service is going to double and grow. And I didn't know what they thought about. Shagu, did you believe it really? Did, did you believe it? In fact, let me even make you laugh. There was a time that our first service used to be like one row. Who remembers that time? And one time I came to, one time I came to church. I'm like, you guys didn't start service early. He said, there was nobody to start the service with. He said, we're waiting for people to come. I said, ah, nah. This must change. Now in the first service, we have thousands of people attend. In the fourth service, thousands of people attend. But the reason why is the power of goals. So why do people set goals? I'll tell you why people don't set goals. And I'll tell you what happens when people set goals. So when people set goals, what happens if you're not careful? What happens is that when people set goals, reality sets in. Then goals begin to leak. Yes or no? Let me give an example. How many of you were like this when you were younger? I would finish school at 23. I would do MYC at 24. I would get a job at 25. I will buy my first car at 26. I will get my apartment at 27. Then I will marry at 28. Did that sound like you? Every, oh, you, that, that's you, right? You, you're even planning it that, you know, you plan everything. Then what happened? It was not even the fact that you didn't get a job. It was to leave school. That was a problem. So if you say you leave at 23, first of all, first of all, you didn't get admission. Then when you got admission, there were some babala courses that were holding you back. There were some grandola courses that were holding you back. Then, you know, then as soon as happened to you, bring, 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 bring my bow. Glory to God. This is very powerful. So this is why people, this is why people lose their goal. This is why people are frustrated. I want to show you right now. Please, can you hurry? Thank you. You know, so this is why people are frustrated. Oh, th- praise God. This is very powerful. So, so, so when you're young, when you're young, this is you and you just put it. So what is inside this vision? What is inside this cup is what? Vision. Oh, you know, at 23, I will graduate. At 24, you know, at, let's say it again. At 23, I will graduate. At 24, I'll do NYC. At 25, what? I'll do, get a job. 26, I'll buy my first car. 27, I'll, get, I'll marry or get an apartment. Very simple. You know, this is vision. <laughs> but the thing about vision is this. Then life happens to you. It's called reality check. Reality begins to puncture your vision. Reality does what? Begin to puncture your vision. Reality begins to what? Puncture your vision. This is reality. Puncture your vision. The first one is Asu. The other one is Jam. The other one is Dollar. Everything begins to what? Puncture your vision. Everything begins to... So, gradually, gradually, your vision begins to leak. You are 32. You have not even bought the first car. You know, when you were younger, you said that, well, I know that by 27 I'll be my sha 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 because sha 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 because, you know, because the kind of guy I even want, I, you know, because I, I, I don't want, I, I don't want a guy to be wasting his time. He should just toast me for like six months first, you know, toast for like six months first, you know, you know, then, you know, someone that can be carrying me, you know, they will, it can be carrying, you know, I love someone that can carry me, even though you are size 14, you know, I want someone that can carry me, you know, that kind of thing. And all of those kind of things. Praise the Lord. Hold on. I want to listen to what I'm saying. 
all your dreams are wonderful all your dreams are wonderful no matter where you are the challenge is that vision is leaking then when you are not married at 34 you say god anybody you send me i will take what happens to you is this watch this please i want to take note of this vision begins to leak and when bishop leaks it leaks to a point where it becomes totally empty i want to show you something and when it becomes empty this is how you are frustrated angry disappointed sad and all of those things and guess what at that point you are wondering why am i angry because all your vision has leaked and some of you are here today if you want to be honest vision has leaked you're just living there's nothing you're planning for the future again vision has leaked and what you do when vision leaks is this and this is very powerful i want to show you maybe i should tell the story the same thing happened to abraham abraham's vision was leaking leaking badly and abraham got to a point he forgot what god said that his own son will become the heir of his family so abraham said to himself watch this now abraham said to himself hey oh wow this is very powerful abraham said to himself that this servant that is born in my house of eliza of damascus let the servant be what be the hell over my house and what god did for him was vision later god called him out god said abraham vision is leaking go outside and start counting and abraham was counting was counting the stars counting the stars counting the stars. you know what god was doing when your vision is leaking this is what you do when your vision is leaking this is what you do you need a revelation that will refill your vision god cannot stop your vision from leaking but every time you come to his presence your vision needs what a refill 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 the reason i'm saying so is that we're in a season where hardship is taking vision from people's hearts and your vision needs what refill because if you keep the vision in your heart it will happen your vision is refill I want to ask you what vision have you left just six weeks ago january 2nd ah this year ah, i will do this by february i will do this by this i'll do this as soon as dollar enter both bars for price both bars all the vision you have you threw away and i'm saying that don't throw away your vision your vision just is a refill because reality will punch on your vision but if you get a review your vision will come to pass this is not the time to throw away your vision this is the time to believe your vision will come to pass do you believe that yes, your vision needs a refill my vision needs a refill and let me say something to you i was saying this in other service when the oil in a car is low you top it oil you top it up right top it up when the car knocks because there's no oil even though you top it oil the engine still cannot work because the car has knocked some of you your vision is so drained out that your engine has knocked top up will not work again what you need is a surgical work of the holy spirit to bring hope and life to you again that's why you've settled in as a victim you have a victim mentality you cannot even see things just getting better again let me close with the scripture someone say hallelujah thank you thank you numbers chapter 21 verse 8 that's what i was trying to start with Look at him and say, your vision needs to refill. And listen to me. Uh, hold on, Psalm 78 verse 41. Just before we come to Numbers. I don't know why. Yeah, Psalm 78 verse 41. Just hold on one second. Yeah. See what the Bible says. It says, yes, they turned back and tempted God. How did they tempt God? The Bible says, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. What happened is this, as they were as their vision was leaking there was nothing god could do in their life again because their vision they had lost their vision they had turned back the question is that don't turn back let god have his way okay so back to back to numbers chapter 21 verse 8 and i'm going to conclude with this as you have goals and vision 
oh wow lord help me i don't you keep bringing a lot of things to my mind how do i refill my vision i will tell you what to do every day go back to your vision say it with your mouth as if you have it that's the way you write the vision on the table of your heart every day go back to your vision say it as if you have it what will you say lord i thank you because we are making the 20 million turnover every year the reason why is that the things you say enter your heart that is how you keep the vision fresh every day go back and say it every day go back and say it. every day go back and say it. let your vision be speaking in your mouth or else the vision will die glory to god so numbers 21 verse 8 numbers 21 verse 8 glory to god so what does that mean practically how do i refill my vision how do i refill my vision how do i refill my vision every morning when i wake up i go to god in thanksgiving and i say father thank you because thank you because of the political dream of becoming the governor i thank you because it's reality and although i can't see it i'm thanking god that's how to keep the vision alive father thank you because the dream of being happily married i thank you because it's done that's how to keep the vision alive i go to god in thanksgiving and present to him the vision knowing that is the author and the finisher of my faith i go back to god that is how i get a vision refill that's how i get a vision refill that's how i get a vision review every morning i go back to god the reason why is that the vision is leaking every day by now you when you when you came to nigeria you said ah the first two years i know that i, I will it will be tough i will break even but after the first two years i will monopolize industry this is the seventh year you have not even monopolized your finances you say you will have 50 employees you're still the only person you are your driver and you begin to and the thing is that you begin to quaver can this thing happen can this thing happen that's why listen to me that's why jesus christ said he said give us now our daily bread did you hear that scripture what he was saying is that refill the vision to us daily he said give to us our daily bread so you go back to god you go back to god ask for a refill you go back and ask for a refill so that the vision does not die praise god that's weak praise god some praise god i said praise god so you go back to god and say father i'm thanking you for a marriage where my husband loves me where we love each other where we are best friends even though it's not like that you go into that place and be confessing the reason why i'm saying so that sometimes every sometimes vision is like a seed every seed has to die to be resurrected again yes or no so when it is dead you keep doing your work in your confession because resurrection is coming the point is this when things are dead people don't know what next to do you have to keep on declaring these things the vision must not die you go back to god and say father thank you because i'm carrying my baby father i thank you every day you keep reading the vision 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 father i thank you i'm carrying my baby father i thank you because the first one billion um, construction has come in you keep reading the vision because if you don't do that the vision would ultimately die within your spirit and your water it through the words of your mouth Numbers 31 verse 8. And this is very instructive. This is very instructive. And Moses said unto, and the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee a fairy serpent. What's a fairy serpent? How many of you have seen the hospital signs of like a snake you know, rolling around the pole? How many have seen it? So this is where they got it from, literally. So what happened here was like, it's a sign of a serpent. God said, take a fairy serpent. God said, take like, mold a snake and put it, mold a snake and put it on the pole. What was the problem here? The problem was that Israel had gone into some kind of backsliding and a physical serpent was biting them. What did I say? No, you have to do better than that. Say physical serpent was biting them. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. So Israel had gone into that place that physical serpent was biting them. And see what God said. God says, make thee a fairy serpent and set it upon the pole and it shall come to pass. Read the next line. Want to go? relax let's read it again from that place and it shall come to pass want to go
okay excellent so what moses, what moses said what god told moses was this he said when anybody is beaten by a literal serpent it, watch what he says if they will not focus on the pain if they will not focus on what beats them if they leave all that alone and look towards the brazen serpent they will be healed hey! this is the principle inside what the principle we are in a time where it's not a physical serpent that is biting people it's economic serpents so people have lost their job price of rice have gone up fuel has gone up dollar has gone up what god was saying is this as this economic serpent is biting if you keep looking at it you will die he said what you have to do is to take off your eyes and look at the brazen serpents you know why and i i had to make adjustments because before you know it i've asked what's dollar price what's this price what's this price i did not realize i was looking at the pain for me to receive healing i had to look at the cross what is the cross i have to meditate when it says when you look at the cross i have to meditate in christ's provision looking at the cross means meditating in what in christ's provision what does it mean meditating in christ's provision so what happened is that immediately they said dollar has gone up i will just say to myself the lord is my shepherd i shall not want the reason why i do that is that if i focus on the pain my finance will die what he was telling was simple he says when the serpent bites the person i say my leg go my leg go my leg will die the person i said see the snake that killed me will die but he said instead of you pursuing the snake and looking at your leg he said look at the serpent on the tree meditate on what was done on calvary that means that when they say that you want to buy something and they say hey price has gone up you will say father i thank you you look back at the tree that the Lord Jesus Christ, it became poor for my sake. That tree is property and I become rich. You look at the tree and say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You look at the tree since I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither have I seen the seed breaking bread. The reason why is that if you keep looking at the pain, you will sink there. You know the problem? The problem is that most of us are looking at the pain and we want life. You don't look at the pain and get life, you get life by looking at the tree. Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? Some of you are saying, hey, you know, I, I, I mean, I was watching something online and someone was lamenting. He said, just one year ago, all my money filled this store. All the money that I have filled this whole store. He said, the same money is only filling one quarter. And when I heard it, I understand what she was saying. She was looking at the pain and unfortunately, the more you look, it will reduce. What she needed to do was not to look at the store again. Because if she keep looking at the economic serpent, she would die. What she had to do was to look on the cross. What does the cross say? He said, the Lord shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We don't receive life by looking at our pain. We don't receive life by looking at what the thing that beat us. We look, receive life by looking on the tree because life comes from what the serpent on the tree yeah. glory to god question what are you saying oh everything has gone up things are so hard i'm going to fail no when they are saying that you will say when men say there's a casting down i will say there's a lifting up the question is that what you look at will determine if you live or die look at the cross and live look at the pain and die and remember this eh? there's no temptation that has come to man that is forever amen no hard time has stayed forever the way God created the world it comes a season this season that is hard will come and go true of us stop talking about it as if it's perpetual the second thing is this 1 Corinthians 10 13 he said there's no temptation that has tempted man that God is not able to bring man out of it, but also will provide you what a way of escape. So the thing is that as I look to the cross, I find a way of escape. So in this season, there's a way of escape. All you have to do is to find it. Stand up, let us pray. Stand up, let us pray.